starting to talk about now planting our first earlies and second early potatoes. Um, obviously the tradition says that you plant on Good Friday. Well, what he doesn't say in the tradition is the soil has to be warm to start with. This year we've had extreme cold weather, a lot of wet weather, and the soil isn't warm. And what I did in preparation for the planting was first of all put on a, a layer of uh, fleece, could be polythene, to help warm up the soil. The worst thing you can do is plant potatoes into cold soil. Um, they take a long time to develop and they don't make the proper growth that you want. So first of all, you fleece it over. You've prepared the ground earlier and then once that soil has started to warm up, then you can seriously start thinking about planting your potatoes. Potatoes early and when they arrive, the first thing you need to do is take them out of the container they're in and you go through a process called chitting. Chitting is where you want to encourage the growth in advance of planting it. As you can see, um, an egg container is ideal, it could be a tray. They want to be placed on a sill somewhere near the light, but what they don't need is a radiator right next door. So it just needs to be light and airy, frost free. And the chilling process has started, as you can see. One of the things that you can do to encourage good strong growth is each week spray them with a light uh, spray of liquid seaweed that can be purchased in any good garden centre. Give them a spray over. That will make these shoots nice and strong. But the benefit is you'll get twice the yield as if you hadn't done it in the first place. So these are coming along nicely now. So when you take the potato and you've got it there, you want about three or four nice sized, robust shoots on the top too many and that will weaken the distribution to the rest. So although it might sound um, dreadful, if you've got about seven shoots on there, remove about three of them evenly spaced and that's just about perfect and ready to plant. However, you can have a situation where you get the potato actually producing from the bottom. That's where we want them on the top and not at the bottom. So in this case, I'd be tempted to rub those side shoots off in order to encourage more up there. To prepare the ground, you will have given it an, a liberal amount of compost, uh, your own recycled compost, or farmyard manure, and you will place that in the bottom of the trench, and then lightly cover that with soil. You don't want to place this potato straight onto the compost. And then you will dig out or hoe out a trench. Um, planting about um, three, four, five, six inches down. And then having done that, you push the soil evenly over the top. You will also note the mistake people make is they do not keep the label with it so they don't remember. As soon as you've actually planted the row, then either attach that to a string, sometimes even better, to put the name on there. More importantly, on the back of the label, write the date that you actually planted. It's a good guide for future years when you think, that's when I put them in, they did really well. We dug out the, uh, the, the trench room to go in. It's well composted because they're greedy little feeders potatoes. And then you place the spuds at an even uh, distance apart, six to eight inches apart in the line. The soil over the top, then, when you see the first sign of shoots appearing out of the ground, you grow through the process of earthing up. Now, in order to give the soil, the, the, uh, the actual potatoes, enough earthing up material, do not plant the rows too close together, because otherwise, if you do, you're never gonna get enough soil up. The purpose of earthing up is to force that potato to grow again through the soil, and then again through the soil, and each time, you're suppressing him, that makes him produce bigger, stronger shoots. And you'll end up with a decent sized earthed up ridge all the way down the line. If we hit some very hot, dry patches, then it would pay to water as well. People may think that, uh, you know, it's wasting time, but it will help to keep the plant moist. And the other thing sometimes you can do is through the trench, separating the rows, 
is put a mulch down. Now that mulch will help to retain the water in the summer that would evaporate as soon as the sun comes out. So you're earthing up and earthing up. Eventually, you'll get your potatoes up to here. The time to dig, when the flowers have finished flowering. As soon as the potato starts flowering, you know it's time to start harvesting. The disadvantages of planting on an allotment is that if blight hits one plot, I guarantee you it will wipe the lot out. Just as a safeguard, why don't you try planting some in a container or a potato bag? The same process applies as putting them in the ground, but these could be outside your back door. They could be in your own garden. There's less chance of blight coming into the area um, than there is when you put them in an allotment. The same actually applies to tomatoes, but that's another story. First of all, a decent sized container. The important thing is I will drill holes in the bottom to give uh, drainage for the uh, potatoes. I will then place a good mixed compost, manure, um, soil to a depth of about four inches in the bottom here. Then I will place the potatoes, what are we going to get? One, two, three, four, maybe five in a container like that. And each time you see the potato coming through the ground, you put more soil in and more soil. Eventually you will find the spud will come and you don't go right to the top, otherwise the water's not going to work. Um, about two inches through the top and then the potato foliage will grow away. The most important thing is, during this period, you have to provide the water, because whatever comes down from the sky will be like an umbrella with all this growth here, and it will just rush off. So you will always be watering that potato when it's in this container, or for that matter, a grow bag. A potato grow bag, just the same as this. And then eventually the same process, the flowers will appear, and it's ready to start taking the potato out. We all rush and we all think they're ready. Don't start fumbling around looking in there to see if they're ready. Just leave them alone. Once the flower is finished, then you can start harvesting. So it's another way of making sure at least you're going to get a crop if all the others have been hit by blight. Because as we all know, blight will attack and that really is the end of the potato. It's no good uh, thinking you're going to save them. The other thing too is that if you do get blight, Cut it off the first sign you see it. You may possibly get some to be saved, but more importantly, do not compost the, uh, the foliage. You put that in a back bag and let the dustman deal with it.